wanted to chat to Dave about what's going on with this garage before we finish. Because you, oh, for okay. context for everyone, Dave was on the move. He'd found somewhere new. We chatted about it off off camera quite a while ago, and he was like, "Do I go for buying this place? It's about seven hundred grand buying a garage with workshops and everything." And that's what you've been gearing up to. And you've even handed in your notice at the other place, haven't you? I handed me notice. Eh? Yeah. So everything was going through. Uh, basically, Robert, a, a garage come up round the corner for me. It didn't come up for sale. I just popped in and said, "Look, if you ever think of selling this, give me a shout." And the basically the chap, he's 65 and he said, oh yeah, do you know what? I'm ready to retire. He said, I just oh. want 700 grand. Well, just. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking like Rob now. <laughs> ready to buy yeah. stock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to me, shit loads of money. But it, 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 for me, it was perfect because you can get like 70 cars on there easily. Two or three ramps with two mechanics, a valitor, and then there was like two people running it. So it just value. beautiful, Every, everything there on site. So I was like, right, I've, I, I, well, if, you, if I could show my house here, everything's empty because I've sold my house to buy the garage. So I needed a 30% deposit, which was 210 grand. Everything's going through. And then the surveyors went in to survey to value it and they valued it at 385,000. What? Are, are you are you buying the business though as well? Or? That's exactly why I asked. Yeah, are you yeah, buying the goodwill? Because, it, because it's car sales, they won't give any goodwill towards it. And I'm not buying all the cars. I'm just buying, yeah. them, so to speak, and the equipment. Um. So, but I've got another mortgage broke looking into it. See if we can get a bit of goodwill. Um. But at the minute, three eight five, they've given me seventy percent of three eight five. Long story short, I need to find another hundred and fifty, but hundred and forty grand. I could do it if I, I've got properties that I, I rent out. I could do it if I sold all them. But how long is it going to take to sell them? Right. Then I've got to pay capital gains tax and all that. So I'm saying to the lads, you know, I think I'm, I'm just going to have to knock it on the head. I'm still selling my house, but what I'm thinking is, if I keep the money in the bank, I'll have about a quarter of a million in the bank. If somewhere comes up for sale for half a million, then I can just pull the trigger and buy something else. It, it, is the old boy not up for old boy sixty five? That's harsh, isn't it? It's, it's not just buying that all. Retiring is is he not up for a, com a discussion about price? Yeah, no, no. Will he not do? Since we both, you know, occasionally you probably more than me with this James Sinclair guy. Will he not do like um, some kind of deal with you where you give him the? 385 grand or whatever it is and agree to pay him over the next five years the rest you can all be written up by yeah i wondered lawyers. if it wasn't the case of splitting out all the equipment and stuff. i don't know what the actual value of all the equipment and the stock is trying to split that out of the deal separately so that isn't hanging on the on the mortgage you'll always preach this thing that you can always try and negotiate some kind of deal where you know if you can't get a mortgage you could say like you say you give them the lump sum up front maybe 400 grand and then I'm going to have to, because of, because, you know, you want the 700 grand, but the surveyors are saying it's only worth 400 grand. So you're, it's in your interest to take this deal because who else is going to buy it? Exactly. Um, can I pay you off over the next five years at, you know, whatever it is, 50 grand a year somehow? I don't know. Maybe you, once you're in, once, once you're in the building and you're operating your business from there and there is a business there, I bet the value it changes because it is all tied together and it is yours. I don't know. I'm not an expert on this yeah. stuff, but it is a I, bloody I, nightmare. How do you get that raw into a contract then? Like, I'll... you'd have to speak to a solicitor and pay him five grand, I expect. But yeah, let me tell you, it can't be done. Cheers. Right, we're five grand in the hole then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But look, where there's a will, there's a way, isn't there? And hundred percent. And it's going to take a bit of, uh, you know, a strategic thinking. Yeah, but also just a bit of a bit of a bit of faith on his part. Yeah, uh, I think, and you might have to put a personal guarantee against it, so that you yeah. know if you didn't stump up over the next whatever, then fair enough, he can come take your house. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you might, otherwise, you, you say to him, six fifty. To be fair, I think you might. I think you'll go for six fifty. Um, so can you lend him a car, Rob? That's what he's trying to say. Because <laughs> <laughs> then he's he's just he's just there. <laughs> this is what this podcast's all about. <laughs> Ah, uh, oh, now I see. Me some money. Thanks for coming on, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Should we have the GoFundMe link down the bottom of Rob's screen, please? I'll show you the spreadsheet. It's not looking good, lads. 
<laughs> well, what would you do then, Rob? Would, like, do you want to buy your own place? And if you were in the same situation, what would you do? Oh, God. Property, as you know, because you've got some property, is it, they, they've only made so much of it. There's only so much land in the world, isn't there, or in the UK or whatever. Um, I wouldn't want to miss out on that opportunity. And I guess in answer to that question, I've got two different routes I'd want to go down. Number one is I like the idea of a farm, uh, a farm with a barn on it. Yeah. And can you do it a little bit Tom Hartley-esque? You know, he's going to got his... Yeah, I like that idea, yeah. Because yeah. you, you're paying yourself for rent, aren't you, et cetera. That was or my original plan when I bought this place. But yeah, well, yeah, quite exactly. Banners do not like cars. Hide them in a barn. Well, this... So if you buy I, one with a barn, kidding. it might be easier. I'm mm. kicking myself every day at the moment because there was a place literally just up the road from my house that came up for like a quarter of a mil. And it was probably, if you look at Rob's place there, probably twice the size of that oh. building with hard standing all around it and chipping and all that. And it was, Ooh. and I was like, I'm in a no, I haven't got a local garage there. Well, like it's down a lane. Will people come down that lane? Because it's, it's oh. a little bit in the sticks. And now I'm thinking that was a stupid move. Not just to, because... for the record, did we discuss this? We point. did, and you said go yeah. for it, James. You idiot. Mm. Yeah, you did. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do remember that. I do remember that happened. And the thing with it is, I'm paying rent on these two units here, and that's just dead money. It was. It, it would have. You know, even if I mortgaged that, it would have been less than I'm paying for these units. So it was stupid not to really. I'm sure I'd have found a garage. But that James, that, that's what I'm thinking with this garage. If I don't go for it in ten years' time, every time I drive past it. Yes, you know. your future self will will thank you. And you think about when you go past, there's, there's people, there's always, everyone's got them in their area, haven't they? They know someone who's in business and they rented a unit off and they own all of it. They own a, an industrial estate. They own a garage and they yeah, built this. Yeah. Once you've got it, this is why I bought this bit of land here at auction. Because I don't oh. I think, I might necessarily get a house there straight away or whatever, but who knows what I'm going to be. I'll go through stages of planning to figure out what I can do. But until I own it, I can't do shit with it. So I no, need to own it. And then we'll figure it out. And it's the same. I think these people, they just take the risk. They'll buy it. And at some stage down the line, it you know, your, your later self will thank you, you know. I agree with that. Especially if we have an interest rate change. It's been really boring now. We have interest rates start going the right way. Obviously, the, the uh, Labour on about building loads more property, which might start to actually make the property market more exciting. You, you could quite quickly see a return on that in, in, in growth. So... Um, yeah, there's. If I had the opportunity, mate, I would be diving on. It sounds like you are doing, but I would be yeah. all over that like a rush trying to make that. Work. Yeah, yeah. I, well, like, even if I have it for ten years, and then I say, right, I want to sack it off. I yeah. could rent it out, or I could then knock everything down, put units on there, rent out the yeah. units individually. Like the you know, the world your oyster, isn't it? If you want it. I'd I'd say Joe's bang on. I reckon there's an opportunity to take the goodwill and the equipment out of the deal. And have that over a payment plan of X amount of years, and then just buying the property at this lower rate. I reckon that's the way to do it. And it happens a lot. I know loads of people have bought businesses where they've paid for the for, paid for the sort of goodwill and, the, and that side of it afterwards yeah. on tranches going forwards. Yeah. So I mean, that, at the end of the day, you've tried to do it at the price that he wants for it, and it's not you that's put up a roadblock. It's yeah, the surveyors exactly, exactly. and the mortgage company. So you got you you can go to him and say, look. It ain't going to happen. No one else is buying this off you for this much money because no one's, it's very unlikely someone's got yeah. 700 grand in cash. And if they have, they're probably not buying this place, they're buying somewhere else. So they really screw you down on it because the cash buyers. Exactly. Yeah. And then at which point, if you're not super desperate to retire, then so be it. But if I buy it from you and we work out this deal, all your staff, you haven't got to worry about laying them off and giving them yeah. um, whatever it is, what you call it when they've, you know, redundancy. Uh, redundancy yeah. yeah. And all that sort of stuff. So you saved yourself there. You, your legacy of your garage gets to live on because someone else is going to come in and you know I'm going to do it right. And, you know, it's not going to be in my interest to buy this property, which will still, in a sense, you, I'm sure you could write it in a clause that if you don't stump up the other 300 grand, he gets it back sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, you'd be oh, happy to do that watching. because... Someone watching this will know, won't they? I'm sure someone yeah. watching this because they're sort of... Any, uh, yeah, 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 any specialist yeah. sort of mortgage advisors... Deal negotiators, whatever. It was a Um, yeah, it would be a shame to let it go because obviously that's probably been a year in the planning, isn't it? It has. It's been a year of stress on my head. So Do you know where you are. At one point, I remember hearing you on that James's podcast. Yeah, was you just, you were saying about, about yeah. saying about buying that place. Yeah. 
Um, do you reckon that would be an option? Because there's a flat up above. What's, what's going on with a flat up above? Uh, it's empty. No, I, I, I can't, where I am, I can't buy that because I'd only be able to buy the pitch and the garage people next door who've got a garage, they want to buy that. Oh. So the landlord's promised the garage to the... But he'll never sell it. He'll never... He's like a... a they haven't been there as long as you have. Uh, have that no, garage. About the same time. Oh, same really? Time. Oh, okay. So, but he's yeah, like, he'll never them, sell it. He'll never sell it. No, I mean, why would you? I mean, I imagine the bloody capital gains he'd have to pay. Because he probably, he probably bought it for a five quid and a pack of Marlboros or something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He paid 50 grand for it in the 80s. Yeah. It's worth like 600 now. So, yeah. But the thing is, you want to be that person that people are joking about that. You bought this for 700 grand. When property's worth exactly. millions for, for a two bed detached. You know, it's a million yeah. quid because that's just how the inflation's gone. People will be like, oh, yeah, you bought that for 700 grand. There's a podcast you can still find on YouTube. You know that old thing we used to use before they implanted it in our brain or whatever? You'll be that guy. <laughs> uh, oh, you've re-motivated me. Uh, the last two days, I, I, I'll give up on it, but no, I'm not letting it go. I'm going the other thing as well, like you say, your other option was to put like a tin garage or, you know, you can get those prefab garage. A, you'd have to get planning, which would be a pain in the ass. Oh, it would probably be all right, but yeah, then you're still on the pitch. You've still got neighbours who you're perhaps not that yeah. great with. And, losing space. And yeah, you are losing more space. Um, and it's not as it's not as motivating as moving to somewhere new and having a whole new start and yeah. owning it for a start. Do you know what I mean? That's the other thing I play. So I get getting messages when I do a video and they're like, oh, two years of YouTube and you still haven't done the roof and your workshop or whatever. It's like, why well, ain't spending 20 grand on re-roofing someone else's building? Yeah, that's, like, the, that's the problem. You never want to invest in something that's not yours, do you? That's the other thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, oh, unless you're Rob. Unless you're Rob, <laughs> Did course. you do it, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're invested in staying there. Rob, how much have you spent on that, mate? A, a bad line, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Less hey Dave, where else could you go and someone and, and a group of friends convince you to spend sixty grand in ten minutes? Six hundred grand in ten minutes, eh?